Hey guys, Nomad Gamer here, bringing you some War Thunder historical battles. Now, uh, I've decided uh, to play a little bit more historical battles because, well, even if you do nothing, you still get something out of it. And, uh,. Also, I want to increase the amount of money I get. My premium account uh, will expire in 5 hours, apparently, and I'm not gonna renew it now. I'm gonna... I'm gonna try and run, um... Run a standard, standard account for a few days, maybe weeks, maybe even a month, I don't know. To see how... Well, to see the difference, I've been playing with a premium account since I first got the game. Mainly because it was so stable, so nice. So, buying a premium account and supporting Gaijin at the time seemed, uh, seemed the right thing to do. Now, my impression of historical battles. Well. Obviously, they're, they seem much better. Now, it is harder to get a kill. You don't get the lead indicator. But, as I said previously, the rewards are much greater. And there seems to be a lot more teamwork in this. Now, let's see, we have only one Tonya bomber. That's it. The rest are all fighters. Played a mission earlier. And the nice thing was uh, one of the bombers called for asked asked for fighter cover. And uh, six teammates responded, including me. Now I don't usually mind going um, I don't usually mind providing uh, escort for bombers. It seems the logical thing to do. A couple of bombers with uh, each with two fighters providing cover, and the rest of the fighters going ahead in a fighter sweep. It seems the logical course of action. And yeah, while well, uh, providing cover for that Wellington, captured Wellington, of course, I managed to get a kill, and I got almost 5,000 lions out of it, which is not bad. If I'm not mistaken, I brought down an F6F in, uh, in my BF-103, uh, BF-109 E3, so that's rank 6 on rank 6, almost 5,000 lines, which is really not bad. You can't get that much in arcade even if you try on a rank on rank kill. But, there we go, bow fighter. 15 kilometers, 16 kilometers away. Bow fighter. Wasn't this supposed to be a Soviet This was supposed to be a Russian versus a... Uh well, I don't know. Whatever. That BF-109 is running away. Typhoon, XP-38. Well, I guess it's Allies versus Germans. It said something about the Russian army and the uh, mission loading screen, so... Let's see, there's a lot of fighters going for that lightning prototype and that King Cobra. Typhoon's all alone down here. Spitfire high above might be coming towards me, but I don't know. I'm gonna help out this guy. Uh, if I, uh, there we go. I knew there was a tail on it. 
Or at least there should have been a tail on him. I don't like the looks of that low fighter. Oh sh that's bad. Bring it in like this. Nope, nope, nope. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Use the energy. Spitfire, try and turn on that Spitfire. There's a lot of enemy activity over here. And I will probably get shut down really quick. Yeah, crew isn't up to scratch. Ah, oh, nuts, I'm all alone down here, and there's one, two, three, four of them. Two Spitfires and a Thunderbolt. This is bad. Yeah, bad would be the word. Use the speed, whatever speed you have left, and I'm screwed. I think I am screwed. Gonna get away with it, but apparently not. I'm trying to maneuver. It's hard. I'm gonna go down. Blah, 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 blah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, leave me alone. Damn it. I'm down. Well, that cut it a bit too short. I'll just wait for the crash so the guy can get the kill. Kill feed, come on. Oh well, but let's see this, hide the HUD, I'm just gonna leave it here. You know what they say, when you're recording, you don't do well. And yeah, that, that was my mistake, instead of uh, playing it safe and going after one lonely guy, I, uh... I went into the pack. That was a big, big mistake. But that uh, BF-109 still managed to take a bit of a beating. Wanna see the HUD for a moment. Yeah. Now there's backup over here. Awesome. Couldn't you guys come up? Little bit quicker now? Okay. Damn it. Maybe if I would have held out a bit long, I might have been able to escape and get back to the airfield and repair. Maybe. But, uh, where was I? Ah. I forgot what I was saying, as usual. Right, yeah, the aircraft, yeah. As you saw, the 109 did take a, be a bit of a beating before it finally went down, which is, uh, which is a bit closer to what the aircraft actually behaved like, so that's nice. They're a bit tougher. Um, some planes do wobble about quite, quite a lot. I mean the the Corsair, first Corsair, is very wobbly, but it does have a lot of ammunition because it's American. That's their theory. I think it has 650 cals and enough ammo to take out two or three planes if you're any good. Now, obviously, I'm not any good. But it's nice to know the, the plane can do that. 
and I don't know, I flew a couple of missions against the Russians with my American planes. And to be honest, and I also flew a couple of missions with my Russian planes to sort of balance things out and see how it was. Now my my Russian Air Force rank is only five at the moment. I'm not really. I usually do the double or five time daily double or daily five times XP, and that's it. Just so I can get the money. Don't really care about. Uh, don't really care about the XP, dude. But in historical battles, they don't seem quite as uh, tough, or rather, quite as uh, sorry, not quite as tough because they're Russians and they're well. I usually engage the uh, IL twos and those things were tough in real life as well, especially tougher than a A six M. Two zero. So, wow, that was short. But yeah, as I was saying, they don't really seem that um, that maneuverable in uh, historical battles. They're not quite as UFO-ish as they usually are. But yeah, I'm gonna do another one because this one was really short. Uh, so what do we have here? Sixty-three. XP for basically doing nothing. And I got 5,000 lions out of it with a premium, fair enough. But still, it would have been uh, a bit over 3,000 lions, so doing nothing without premium. Because this is the premium bonus, it's 1858. So, it's really not bad. I mean, uh, Historical battles, especially at first, while you get the hang of it, they are a bit more lucrative. And I would recommend when you get a new plane, for the first, let's say, at least five free, free repairs, because you do get free repairs, at least the first five, use them in historical battles. Make the most out of that aircraft. And more importantly, all the XP you get in a battle, in a historical battle, you get to that plane and that plane only. I don't know, 34,000 XP. And if we look at uh, battles, there we go, victory times 5, obviously. 53,800 53, XP I got in that mission. And a bunch of that went straight into this. Uh, nope, sorry, wrong button. There we go. 34,000. Now, this means I can unlock Omnipurpose Ammunition, which I couldn't before because I didn't have nearly enough. I'm also close to getting the... Um, air target ammunition which is very nice I mean fragmentation incendiary, armor piercing incendiary, armor piercing high explosive and incendiary tracer which is which is great for blowing up planes especially wellingtons because those things seem to go down quite easily armor piercing tracer and adjustment incendiary and I'm piercing bullets. So yeah, the machine gun is probably gonna stay at omnipurpose. And once I get the um, 1300 XP, which will probably be the next mission, I'll go for this one. At the moment, since it's not a lot, and I'll hopefully make up the money. I'm gonna buy these two and take them out into a historical battle. So, there we go. Historical battle. Again. 
Now the waiting time is uh, longer, obviously. Even though there are 29, almost 30,000 players online. It's still a 30 second waiting to average waiting time. Again, the same map. But to be honest, I, I like this mode a lot more than than the others. Probably gonna s actually, I am still gonna keep playing uh, arcade battles, but only low tier. I mean, if the repair cost, if the full repair cost for the aircraft is under a thousand lines, or let's say two thousand lines, uh, yeah, under a thousand lines or two thousand lines, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, if the repair cost is under that, I will probably use the planes in arcade battles as well. If it's over that, I'm gonna stick them in historical and use the low tier aircraft to basically make money for repairs. If that means the plane is out of action, if that means a higher rank aircraft is out of action for a few days, then so be it. I, uh,. I don't have the time to play as often as I would like because work keeps, keeps me very busy. And I don't know, uh, after sitting in front of the computer from 9, 10 o'clock in the morning to God knows, uh, I've, I've had days when I've worked till 8 o'clock at night, so uh, that's interesting. Yeah, if I have to spend 10, 12 hours in front of the computer doing the work that I do, which requires quite a lot of concentration, I don't really feel up to focusing on um, focusing on playing games where I actually want to do well because I slightly need to and uh, I want to say care but uh, I would like to do well I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm honestly not going to be able to play it is it is tiring it's hard to concentrate and um, well not necessarily hard to concentrate, but honestly, my eyes freaking hurt after 12 hours of staring at numbers and uh, code and stuff like that. I just want to relax, so uh, War Thunder works for relaxing, but. Uh, I only usually play one or two battles a night then uh, call it quits I would much rather I don't know, listen to a to a jing to listen to a mingles with jingles by the way if you don't if you haven't subscribed to Bohemian Eagle to the mighty jingles and if you like War Thunder and World of Tanks then I strongly recommend you do subscribe to him and also Origin, HB Origin. He does some really good War Thunder videos as well. <coughs> but yeah, back to the subject at hand now. Oh, well, I'm uh, 2700 meters up and still climbing and there are planes higher so that's, that's really nice. Arcade, you can barely get up. Oh, something's down there. In arcade, you can rarely, you rarely get planes this high. 
Usually the planes that are this high are bombers. And they're up there all alone until some idiot like me wants to try and bring them down and spends half the game climbing to that annoying altitude in a map which is small four square kilometers or something like that for, uh, for arcade maps these as you can see are much bigger I've been talking all this time since uh, I took off and only now I'm reaching the battle line the front line time in which, if I were in an arcade battle, I would have already made it to the enemy base. And there, that dot in the sky that looks like a smudge on the screen is an enemy aircraft. So let's try and head towards it, see what's up. And... Look at that, Falker Wolf. Five kilometers uh, diagonally, let's say three kilometers above me. So he's already at 6,000 meters. Hello. Are you alive? Better get closer, so why not? It's probably a bomber. It's probably a... Ah, nuts. Ah, uh, and he's seen me. Dive. Get some backup. I really don't want to tangle with a B-51. Now I'm really going fast. Hellcat! Ooh, that's a target I like. I'm going a bit too fast. I'm gonna overshoot. I'm not worried about that. I wanna maneuver around him. There we go. And now I'm on his tail. Crit. Maneuver around him. Oh! Shit! Okay, I think I can still make it. That's it. God damn it. Well, at least I got buddy. Damn wobble. Well, that happens. You saw, I saw it coming. I tried to pull away. I didn't manage because the aircraft. The response is a bit sluggish compared to arcade. If I were in arcade, I would probably would have uh, been able to to dodge him I wanted to get around him so I wouldn't en end up behind him but that didn't work out but nobody's pissed off I mean I'm pissed off that I made a stupid move he probably doesn't even care otherwise he would have been already raged in chat I did get the kill so that's nice the aircraft is on free repairs, so I'm not gonna lose money out of it. But, yeah. I'm still a big noob at historical battles. But to be honest, I like them. They're harder, they're a challenge. And since I still haven't gotten the hang of playing with a joystick, even though I do have one. It's a crappy one, but at least it works. Since I haven't gotten a chance, uh, d since I haven't gotten the hang of that thing, I'm gonna stick to historical battles. Once I get the hang of using the joystick in historical battles, I'm gonna try and graduate to full real battles. Because I'm, I'm really curious how those things uh, work out. And, uh... I do have a request to Gaijin. And I think everyone who's playing 
historical battles has made this request. Guys, please put an ammo counter. I beg of you. We need to know how much ammo we have left. I mean, I'm guessing most aircraft do have an ammo counter in the cockpit, but I really don't want to spend time trying to learn Russian and trying to learn the cockpit of every single aircraft if I'm playing casually. Yeah, propeller heads, true propeller heads, those guys that only play full real battles, who have proper joysticks and everything else. They like it, so they learn it. I would do exactly the same. Um, I am interested in aircraft, but I usually like to know what the strengths are, what their weaknesses are, a bit of their history, and I really don't want to learn every single detail about the goddamn cockpit. And honestly, apart from proper pro propeller heads, no one will bother to go into, or not, not necessarily proper pro propeller heads, but most people, if we can play third person, oh, that was close. If we can play third person, we will play third person because it it reduces the chance of uh, of a collision, especially if you have to use buttons like crazy. If, for example, you have a joystick with a POV hat switch, then yeah, having separate controls for the fly, for the fly, uh, for the control for the aircraft control surfaces and for the uh, for the view controls, having the hat switch for view controls, yeah, okay, you can uh, look around the cockpit. Most uh, serious uh, propeller heads use track IR, which which monitors your head movement, so you can look around. Uh, Malekith Caddy is one of them, another good YouTuber. He also streams on Twitch. So, for true propeller heads, for those guys who fly who fly full real battles in which you have only the cockpit view. It's... it's okay to fly in the cockpit view because you have... Oh, I got a fighter. How the hell did I get a fighter reward? Don't tell me all these things were 190s. I know that... Uh, if I saw things correctly, the fighter and bomber awards are usually awarded to the best scoring, um, well, uh, the best scoring air, uh, players on a specific class of aircraft. So most air kills, fighter, more, most ground kills, bomber award, and it's usually. As far as I notice, it's the first two, and it's based on the aircraft. Wow. Well. Wow. <laughs> That's nice. I got two out of those uh, five kills were in historical, so yeah, I haven't played this plane much. I've been playing the low-tier Italians more. But yeah, there you go. One aircraft down. One aircraft down, made them around 226 XP or something like that. I, I don't remember. I, I already forgot. But one aircraft down, one critical hit, obviously. Uh, three hits into that aircraft. One, 
takeoff and that's well XP only. Fifty nine second battle time. Oh that uh yeah that's how long I was engaged, I think. That's eight hundred and three lines for almost a minute. Sixty percent activity. I flew for sixty percent of the mission, I think. Mission reward because we won. Achievements for fighter, which is nice. And that adds up to, let's do the math, 6100, no wait, crap, sorry, my math failed me. All that stuff adds to, well that's nice, a bit over 11, a bit over 11,000 lines. So even without the premium bonus, yeah, XP would have been uh, less, considerably less. Let's keep it like that. But still, eleven thousand lions for basically flying, critting a Hellcat with a BF one hundred nine, which is very interesting. But then again, energy fighters keep your energy up. Always. Be on guard if you have a 109 above you because you usually will get killed, especially in historical battles, or at least that's what usually happens to me. So, yeah, uh, critting a Hellcat, unfortunately crashing into him because I was such an idiot. Luckily, he crashed before I did. And uh, that's 11,000 lions. Well, that's bloody awesome. Excuse the language. Well, there we go. Historical battles. I, I probably left out a few things. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, before I forget again. My upload schedule is erratic, as I said, because of work. And I don't play as often as I would like to. So, please bear with me. I am trying to... Um, to get a schedule together, however, this won't be happening for the next couple of weeks. I have my first airsoft game uh, on Sunday, so that means I'll be away during the weekend. Probably gonna play a bit, but I seriously doubt it. And I promise I will get a proper schedule up. I'm gonna duct tape it to my screen if I have to and I'm gonna do my best to to respect that upload schedule so that's it for now this is Nomad Gamer signing out and wishing you all clear skies